Hi, and welcome back to the Hope Cymru Talk Show. Thank you for joining us. I am Joe, and today I'm being joined by Ken and Tim Jones, the Director of Ministry in the Diocese of Landau. Hi. Tim, thank you for joining us today. Great to be here. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, uh, so I'm um, uh, uh, Director of Ministry and Discipleship in the Diocese of Landau. I've been here uh, two and a half years. Um, my family originally from South Wales, but um, uh, I grew up in, in West Berlin uh, and then in my teens elsewhere in Germany, um, but started going to boarding school uh, in North Yorkshire uh, and would be coming back to South Wales to visit family and holiday times and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's taken a while to get myself into the, the church in Wales. Um, mm -hmm. I've been ordained, let's see, for 29 years this year, so I've served in a variety of places uh, mostly North Yorkshire, Suffolk, and uh, the United States before before coming here. Yeah, yeah. We both have a bit of a wide variety of backgrounds. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, we used to live quite close yeah, to each so other, didn't actually, we, once upon a time? We actually yeah. used to live quite uh, close to each other, but that's, that's a story for another time. <laughs> um, well, today we're going to be talking about the church, and um, we'll be diving into uh, the church being relevant. Is, it, is the church still relevant today? And... If it is, how is the church relevant to society? But before we tuck into that, uh, that subject, uh, Tim, tell me, um, tell me something that you really love and appreciate about the universal church, not just mm. the church in Wales or the church in England. Um, one of the things that um, somebody once said to me in my, in my mid-teens, which has always stayed with me, um, we were asked to pray for um, the people who'd brought us to faith. Uh, and I, I thought about who that might be, and um, I thought about my mother and about um, my Sunday school teacher when I was a child, and about two particular teachers, Miss Berry and uh, Mr. Drake at, at school, uh, and the, the important role they'd played in bringing me to faith. And somebody pointed, it was pointed out kind of later on in the prayer that, that people years ago had brought them to the faith. And years before that, people had brought them to the faith. And years before that, people had brought them to the faith. And that chain went right the way back to those disciples mending their nets and fishing on the Sea of Galilee to the point yeah. where Jesus said, come follow me. That yeah. there's a direct chain of call and response, of love and discipling and teaching mm. that just cascades through the centuries back, back to Christ himself. And I've always kind of felt that in my heart and yeah. given thanks to God for, for Miss yeah. Berry and Mr. Drake. And, yeah, uh, that's quite yeah. a significant thing to have in your early formative years. Absolutely. And is that something that you're kind of trying to pass down to your children yeah. as well? Yeah, children and, uh, uh, and you know, it, it, when I was in parish ministry, I was very conscious. Uh, whenever I was able to um, bring people to faith in a way that I could kind of see myself doing, which is uh, I mean, I can come on to that in a moment, but, mm -hmm. um, uh, but I was aware that I was, I was passing on that flame, as it were. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing about ministry, and d being a disciple generally, is that, um, you know, Christ talks about the way that we sow and others will reap, and we reap where others will sow. Um, uh, we do an awful lot of sowing, we do an awful lot of reaping, and uh, those times where we get to reap where we've sown the seeds of faith, those are actually relatively rare. Um, yeah, it is and it's rare. it's important though not to not to uh, judge yourself by how much reaping you do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some some people we, we, we're called to be sowers. We're called yeah. to be sowers. Sow and be ready to reap, um, yeah. and don't expect it all to be about you. Yeah, yeah. You know, when we talk about being relevant, I'm not. I, I don't mean, um, or we don't mean. You know, is the church still cool? Is it still popular to go to church? Is it still a fun place to go to, or is it still culturally acceptable to go to church. You know, what we mean by relevant is, you know, is, is the church impactful? Is it, you know, transformative? Is it beneficial mm. to society? And, it, you know, and is it loving? You know, and so how can you, can you help us unpack yeah. that? Is the church really relevant? You know, yeah. if it is, what is that? How is it relevant to society? Yeah. I think there's two things I want to say really to this. Um, and, and kind of the foundation element is... Um, uh, the church is relevant because the gospel that we have to share is true. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the gospel, the good news, 
is as true today as it ever was. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, what we have to say matters. Uh, um, uh, and the perspective, the insight, the paradigm, the worldview of Christianity um, is as true as it ever was. Mm. Um, the, we're going through a period of time where uh, Christianity in our culture at this time has been subsumed within um, uh, a very different, very secular uh, kind of worldview with its origins kind of well outside uh, uh, the church. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, Christianity remains true. Yeah. The other, the second bit uh, regarding relevance is not just about truth, but about the way in which the church is able to allow the gospel to have traction in our society. Mm. Um, so it's okay, you know, saying that it's true. Mm -hmm. It is true. Um, but are we able to uh, connect with uh, the conversations that are going on in, in society? Are yeah. we able to be the stumbling block where necessary? Are we able to be the encourager where necessary? Yeah. Are we able to be noticed where necessary? Yeah. And that's where I think we're, we've got issues where we've yeah, got problems. Yeah, yeah. So I guess, <clears throat> would it be fair to say then, if from the institutional standpoint, if, if the, the church is deviating out of the roots of the gospel, that it fails to be relevant? Or is that too deep um, to... Um, well, <laughs> is the church... Dear? Um, from the get-go, the church has not been perfect. Read Acts of the Apostles. Um, you know, read about the 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 way in which Paul and Barnabas had a big row about something, and Barnabas, who'd been Paul's mentor, ended up kind of saying, "Forget this for a game of soldiers," and heading off back to Crete. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there have been disagreements and arguments within the body of Christ from the outset. Yeah. Um, uh, I. It's not that the arguments don't matter. It's not that the seeking after truth doesn't matter. Um, I'd simply observe that, that God in God's goodness and in his grace uh, still manages to inhabit yeah. the church and still manages to, to draw us um, where he'd have us go. I think one of the things that it's, it's useful to remember is that we belong to God mm. uh, and nothing we can do can thwart God's purposes. Um, but it is the case uh, that we can not live well enough into our calling. So the, the life of the church is a continual day by day yeah. uh, attentiveness yeah. to scripture and challenging ourselves about where we are uh, yeah. regarding the, the gospel. Yeah. Now, what do you think it'll look like for, you know, to be more specific, for the Church of Wales um, to gain more traction within society mm. um, or to be more outspoken with the gospel. What do you think that mm. that will look let like? Me, let me check what we're talking about here. When you say the church in Wales, are you talking about uh, the denomination, yeah, the church in yeah, Wales, or are we talking Anglican, about Christianity yeah. in Wales, Anglicanism Sorry, Anglican. in Wales? Um, uh, what would it look like for us to have more, more traction? I think there's, there's um, two things to say. Um, on the one hand, uh, it's important that all Christian communities in every neighborhood get generally better mm -hmm. than, than we have been uh, in, in recent decades yeah. at engaging with those people who don't come to church, who aren't active in faith, who, who um, are wondering about faith but have never taken the step of exploring. Um, uh, it's important that rather than simply open our doors and put a sign up outside and say 10 a.m. service, all welcome, yeah. that actually we get out there, we go to where they are, we engage in conversation, yeah. we listen to their perspective and their stories, yeah. we start the conversation, we discover new friends, yeah. and we invite people yeah. into the life of Christ. Yeah. Um, we, there was a time when our culture simply drew sure people yeah. Into, yeah. into church. Uh, people would wonder and then take the step of going to church. Those days are over, therefore we've got to be far more proactive in engaging and mm -hmm. inviting and welcoming. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, so that's the first thing. The other thing though is, is something which is less easy for any one individual church to do, which is that 
there's a reason why the culture has shifted away from, from uh, a sense of warmth towards Christianity. There are, there are, um, when we ask people why they don't come to church, it's very rare nowadays that people will say, oh, the pews are too hard, or I would if the coffee were a bit better, or I'd come if the heating were a bit better. You know, people go and watch sports matches in the freezing cold. Um, yeah. You know, it's the, the, the heating isn't, isn't the, the be-all and end-all of everything. Yeah. Um, uh, the reasons why people don't come to church is because there are fundamental questions nowadays about whether Christianity or any faith perspective outside of science and scientism can, consider, can be considered to be true. Can it be considered to be intellectually coherent and respectable and mm -hmm. credible? Um, uh, people have this notion that uh, uh, because of Darwin, uh, faith is blown out of the water. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a nonsense notion, but yeah. nonetheless, huge yeah. numbers of people hold that. Um, people believe wrongly that the church is incredibly rich, therefore their local church doesn't need them. Uh, mm -hmm. People uh, are utterly scandalized by the appalling sexual abuse revelations yeah. that have, that have yeah. come to light in, in, uh, in recent decades. Um, so those are major cultural factors, way beyond the scope of any one local church yeah. uh, to really grapple with. But when people are wondering about faith, those are the actual issues they're wondering about. It's not that the local church doesn't need to make sure it's got comfortable seating and decent toilet facilities and as good yeah. coffee as it can afford. Um, it doesn't mean that the local church is doomed when it tries to engage with people and invite them and welcome them. But I think that the thing that the church across Western Christianity has to do better is really address itself publicly to those, those big cultural issues which form a huge barrier to people exploring faith. Yeah. We haven't done that well. We've had a little bit of an attitude of, um, well, you have your questions, but we the church, it, it's, beneath right. our, it's beneath our dignity really to, to respond to them publicly. Yeah, we, we, we don't need to, we don't really need to argue our case. We just need to quietly get on doing our thing yeah. and everybody will say, wow, and come to church. It's just not happening. Yeah. There are major reasons why people struggle with faith and as a, a, a as a, as a faith community as a whole, we need to be better at, at engaging people yeah. in, a, in a, 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 a cultural level uh, yeah. in a way that we haven't And maybe yet. just a, a, a frank honesty and humility that you know, some people don't always have it all figured out. And you know, we, people in the church sin as well. Yeah. I just have to be honest with yeah. that and not try and, yeah. you know, not try and hide it. But we're, we're talking about a kind of um, cultural assumptions that come from the places where people get their cultural assumptions mm -hmm. nowadays, which are predominantly through screens of one kind or another. Things that, yeah. The things that shape... And we have um, to break those the, down. Yeah, the things that shape how people... The assumptions they make, the comedy programs that they watch, mm -hmm. for example, um, uh, the, 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 the TikTok discussions and exchanges that people have, yeah. um, uh, as well as discussions that people have in their schools. Uh, as well as you know, the discussions that people have um, with their families, which have always been the case, but, but it's through screens that, that our culture is being shaped. Yeah. And by and large, the church hasn't done a good job of really engaging yeah. on that platform. Hence, it's just brilliant that we're doing this now. Yeah, it is, it is, it is. And the yeah. church is starting to engage, but the problem is that um, the nature of the engagement in, in, in social media is that um, uh, things that go out on screens tend to simply reinforce people's echo chambers. So the, the, the reality is that yeah. the, the conversation that we're having is likely to be flagged up and watched by people who are already Christian yeah. and is likely not to be flagged up for people yes. who've, who've um, uh, kind of shown that they're not interested in this. So. So we need f to find some way to, to, to break through the algorithm. Yes. And it may take just simple, some simple steps of engagement in getting people to share things, yeah. because that kind of breaks away from yeah. the, the AI and the algorithms that are yeah. built into social yeah. media. 
Yeah, and also stuff happens at national and international level. And there are people who are influencers um, uh, who have real cultural clout in our society um, uh, whose opinions count. So, for example, when someone like Justin Bieber talks about their faith, that really matters. Um, when comedians like Frank Skinner um, uh, are honest about their faith, nobody can pretend that Frank Skinner is not um, a very astute and intelligent man. Um, it's very difficult to write faith off as something that only fools uh, investigate. Yeah. When yeah. someone as credible as Frank Skinner uh, in, in, the, in, in, you know, in, in popular society, in popular culture, um, is open about their faith. So one of the things I'd say, in, you know, in the, please God, in the event that, that somebody uh, who has some cultural clout and quietly has a faith, mm -hmm. Please be open about your faith. Yeah. It, what, what you have to say makes a huge difference. Yeah, I believe it's been happening more frequently. Indeed. And Indeed. Um, that just may be a sign yeah. that you know, people are praying more and that God is at work. Yeah. And um, I firmly believe that, that God is at work. And um, that's part of why I'm so passionate about getting involved with, with Hope Cymru, because we want to see yeah. God glorified. We want to see Wales reconnected with Jesus. Yeah. So. One of the things that I thought was, <laughs> ironically, hugely helpful um, was uh, the, all the efforts that the New Atheists were making some, oh, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 years ago, mm -hmm. um, uh, trying to lampoon faith and, 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 yeah. uh, and, and say how ridiculous and, yeah, and intellectually out. incoherent faith was. Um, actually, in a, in a sense, they, they shot themselves in the foot because... Um, they were able to capture the attention of, um, uh, of, of many people who were able to look carefully at the assertions being made by the New Atheist world and, and see their own intellectual incoherence mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and start to realize that, that faith positions actually did have some importance, something very relevant to say. Um, yeah, didn't so John, was it John Lennox? Isn't he John Lennox, to, yeah. John, John I mean, Lennox wrote well, something in response to... Indeed, the yeah. John Lennox, but also it's more that um, uh, all kinds of social commentators who had hitherto happily joined in the kind of lazy bandwagon uh, mm -hmm. assumption that, that Christian faith had nothing to say anymore, yeah. um, were just quietly... When, when they saw that what people like Richard Dawkins or Christopher Hitchens or Polly Toynbee had to say, um, were able to, to, to look at that and say, is that it? Is that really, the, is that really all you've got? Yeah. Um, uh, and, and just the sheer shallowness of the point being made yeah. uh, uh, allowed, allowed Christianity uh, to, uh, to be given a second look. And I think that's been tremendously helpful. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah the, the, our, our faith journey as a, as a people, as a people of God, is not straightforward. It's been a rocky road mm. through, the, through the years. But, you know, God's not given up on us. There are all kinds of people who uh, have a faith. All kinds of surveys have shown mm -hmm. that there are far more people who have a faith um, uh, than actually come to church. Yeah. And um, many of them will be telling themselves that they don't need to be involved in yeah. in church life. There are many churches that will argue that that their mission is not about getting and they'd say bums on seats. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't think that's true. I would say, you know, if you if you're a person of faith and you pray, um, whether your prayers, uh, whether your faith is as tiny as a mustard seed or whether you know that your faith is flourishing and you don't come to church, the church needs you. Um, the other people who, who are there in church need your fellowship, they need your solidarity, they need the encouragement that your presence brings. Um, uh, we're at a stage in, in the life of the church where you need to be counted. Um, do whatever it is that prevents you coming from church, um, whatever effort you need to make, whatever you need to overcome to be part, an active mm -hmm. member of, of the church, please do what you need to do and yeah. come and join in. Yeah. You're, you're needed, you're called. Tim, thank you for joining us. Thank you for You're your uh, 
sharing your experience and your, your knowledge and your wisdom about church. And uh, thank you all for watching, and join us next time for the next Hope Cymru Talk Show. Thank you.